I'd like to talk about U.S. firearms laws, this time the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988. Of course, this is for educational purposes. We always encourage you to do your own research. First, let's take a look at where the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988 came from. It was introduced by William Hughes in Congress and then signed into law by Ronald Reagan in 1988. The act makes it illegal to manufacture, import, sell, ship, deliver, possess, transfer, or receive any firearm that is not detectable by a metal detector or has components that don't generate enough image on x-ray machines. Uh, on the surface, it seems like a rational uh, restriction. But why was the law passed? In my opinion, it was created in reaction to fear of the new polymer pistols that were literally just start hitting the market. After all, the Glock was first introduced to the United States in 1984. Uh, the first polymer pistols were still being experimented with and a lot of those manufacturers were manufacturers of firearms that were considered Saturday night specials or inexpensive firearms. So these laws were not against firearms that existed but in my opinion against science fiction firearms that might exist or potentially could exist based on the irrational fears of the representatives at the time. After all, this was two years before the Die Hard 2 movie came out that really introduced the public at large to the Glock pistol for the first time. So this was two years before that introduction. So were these laws being passed against what might exist one day? Or, I suggest, was the goal possibly to demonize any lightweight, inexpensive firearm? So let's take a look at the, inexp or the effectiveness of the, of the act. Did it have any effectiveness? In my opinion, it had none. And the reason we can see that is because it had it's a built-in sunset clause that after 10 years it would become void if not reenacted. And sure enough, in November of 1998, it was not in, uh, re rebuilt. So it, it void, it, it expired. And that the fact that it was not voted to, to be renewed shows that it did, had no effectiveness. So in, from 1988 to 1998, nothing, of course, happened because this was legislation against science fiction, against laws, against technology that didn't yet exist. After it expired or after it sunsetted, another five years passed with nothing happened because this is, again, a law against fear. And then in 2003, for some reason, it was reenacted for another 10 years. Now, I've not been able to find really any information on how that happened or when, how that, why that happened, uh, if there was anything to prompt that. But somehow it was passed through and reenacted. But what that tells us is that it will sunset December of this year, 2013. So I suggest, is this coincidence? Is this why we're seeing all the media coverage of the 3D firearms printing technology recently? Do we expect public attention to soon focus on this expiration in December? Or will, the fo will it re will remove focus and, and pay attention to something else and just let this be either renewed or expired without any scrutiny? Again, this seems like, like legislation that might almost be rational on the surface. And I don't want to suggest that I'm posting a video to uh, help criminals at all. But what I am going to suggest is that perceived safety through limits on freedom is not worth the price. Limits on innovation, morality applied to invention, does not aid society in general. I believe it shackles society. The continued uneducated restrictions on technology and innovation like this continue to uh, create a society where people assume that the government knows what's best for us. And I'm, I'm willing to uh, pick freedom over safety, as uh, Ben Franklin has quoted to say. So I suggest we need to question the need for more laws. I said it before, a simple framework of laws gives us something we can all work together in society where complicated laws really just act as a maze for criminals and uh, the, the criminals to hide behind. I suggest that we take responsibility. When we say freedom requires eternal vigilance, of course that's vigilance against our government, but also against individuals. We have to take personal responsibility. We can't at the same time expect government to leave us alone and also protect us from wrongdoers. Again, personal responsibility is the question here. These are the links that we use to find this information. We suggest that you, or we encourage you to support organizations that support our freedom. We do post this information on our websites. We always appreciate your support. And as always, thanks for watching.